Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and as you can see, I've got quite a mess on the table there. A little bit of a quick impromptu video, wasn't planning on doing this, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of mid-process what I'm up to. All this junk on the table is not all stuff that I bring with me, by the way, before you go, what the hell is wrong with this guy? I mean, I don't bring whole boxes and neutral game bars with me, so calm down, but this is just me in the middle of trying to hash out what I want to bring on a trip. This trip, a little different, I've decided, um, I've been slowly kind of accumulating some different gear and trying to lighten my load. Eventually, getting towards that ultralight, we are not there, um, but you know, we're getting closer, further and further down the scale with the lightweight at least. Um, I even went so far as this guy over here, this is an EMS packable pack. Um, it only weighs, its list weight is only about nine ounces. I weighed it to a true weight of 10. I bought this originally as a, as a, in case we set up a bivouac, I could have this in my pack as a extra day hiking kind of pack. And it also makes a really good pillow. So I swapped it out, it's about the same weight as the pillow I used to use. And um, now I have kind of a dual purpose. I have a pillow that turns into a pack. Tried my best to get all my um, new gear, which I'll show you in a moment, in there, didn't work. Um, actually, I think I could make it work if I really wanted to. I don't know, it'd be pretty hardcore. My only option was to stick with the EMS Long Trail 70. I do love that pack, but I bought it before I started making a lot of gear choices to lighten things up. And I'm kinda not outgrowing it, but maybe undergrowing it. As you can see, I've actually taken the top pouch off of it. So that's close to a half a pound that I can shave off right there. I mean, all these little ounces add up. Let me show you some of the items that I have paired out for less weight items. First things first, the sleeping pad. Now this is actually a little, not quite as much about weight, but I'll explain. There's my Z-Lite sleeping pad in the back. I think the list weight is 14 ounces. Mine's actually weighing in at 13 ounces, probably because I've beaten the crap out of it a little bit. That, this right here, this black bag in front, that is the replacement sleeping pad that I have chosen. It is a climate inertia X-frame, okay? That's the whole thing right there. This weighs in at nine ounces. That's, uh, you know, a four ounce savings, and that's awesome. But the main reason I did this was actually less about the weight in this instance and more about the fact that when I do get down to, well, we found out that that bag Eh, probably not working, but something smaller, kind of like that, but with more support. Tacking that big old guy on it, kind of a pain. Uh, doable, but it's kind of flopping around and something like this. I did mostly for the space. Now, that was 40 bucks. Super comfortable, in my opinion. I love it. Still recommend it. This I consider a luxury item. This actually rang in at about $77, okay? so. You know me, or if you don't, I am pretty cheap. So in this case, I went ahead and did it because it was worth it. But again, you can get that. I highly recommend that, 40 bucks, and even cheaper. Plenty of people do the like $15 foam circular roll mats. They work fine too. This actually rolls out and you inflate with your breath. It also comes with a pump. I don't know if I'm gonna carry the pump. I'm thinking that I'm getting the right comfort out of just the blowing it up with my breath a couple times but it rolls out, it is a full length, and it can actually go in your sleeping bag. You slide it inside and it works pretty well um, at keeping it in place. And the other reason for this is that it can loft up in between those open spots there. And that is supposed to make the insulation qualities of your sleeping bag be a lot more effective because they're not being matched down by you. Okay, and then in the winter, they suggest that you could use this along with that Z light over there. In the winter, I can carry that and the climate, right? They say you can put the climate on the bottom to keep you up off the ground, then your regular sleeping pad on top, and you got kind of a double layer of insulation there. So that's the upgrade I made there to the sleep pad. Besides the sleeping pad, there is another major piece of the sleep system, and that would be 
sleeping bag. This is a sleeping bag that I've been using. It is a $35 Swiss Sport sleeping bag. Got it off of Amazon, yes. $35 free shipping. One tenth the price of uh, <laughs> a lot of the sleeping bag bags out there. Does the form factor feel exactly the same quality wise just as those other bags for $350? Absolutely not. Does it function? Absolutely, at least in my opinion. And I, I put it through its paces. It's holding up. Yeah, the zipper catches every once in a while and stuff like that, but that's a whole nother story about this sleeping bag. But this is the sleeping bag I'm using. Um, and it clocks in at two pounds, 14 and three quarters ounces. So just a hair under three pounds. But it's summertime right now. I should probably mention that. This is great for the, um, those cooler seasons. It's rated down 30 degrees, probably BS. Let's call it 40. But for warm weather, why do all that? So I got this. Okay, this is a fleece liner. Full disclosure, fleece liners are out there by Coleman and Tech Sport, T-E-X Sport, for like 15, let's call it $20 uh, for like square liners. This cost me 40, okay? Why? Because it's by Sea to Summit, which, you know, is a higher quality brand. I usually, believe me, I almost did the $15 fleece bag. It probably would have got the job done. I'm sure it would have based on the reviews I was seeing. They were saying, hey, the quality ain't great, but it, it, it works and you can use it as a standalone sleeping bag. But I went ahead and got this because the quality looked really nice. I was looking at it for a while. It's mummy shaped as well. That's a big factor for me because in the winter, I can shove it inside of my other cheaper sleeping bag and get some more warmth out of it. I don't know if I found the official specs on this, but I'm thinking probably 10 extra degrees you would get out of this. It's really comfortable. I used it on the Shenandoah trip that we did. There's a video on that as well. You can check that out. I didn't really mention it in there, but it worked really well. It was hot. It was really hot when we were out there in August. And this did the trick. It was comfy. You can lay on top of it. And if it starts getting a little chilly at night and you go ahead and, and you know put it around you for comfort and you're good to go, plus side of this, the major plus size, it obviously is not that compact, not at all. It is smaller than that, but still doesn't really compress. The fleece just doesn't have that quality, but the weight. The weight is one pound, seven ounces. So that's three pounds. This is a pound and a half. Okay, there you have it. I just cut the sleep system weight in half and it's plenty comfortable. Let's move on to shelter. Out of the big three, I've gotten two, because as you know, the bag I've not upgraded yet. But let's move on to the second item out of the big three, and that would be shelter. Now, if you've seen my videos before, using the Kelty Salita 2, it is in a pack like this. Let's put it down for perspective there. That's the whole, that's the whole kit right there there weighs in at five pounds the list the list weight is not going to be five pounds um you'll see even like three and a half pound list weights that's without the rainfly so that's kind of stupid in my opinion uh true weight with the rainfly on this kelty sleeve too is about four and a half pounds then i bring the footprint and that pops it up to five pounds so five pound system there and it's also you know pretty bulky um try fitting that in that little guy hmm yeah, I tried, believe me, it fit, but that was all that was fitting. So what did I do, what was my solution here? Well, I will show you. Finally bit the bullet, I've been looking at this for a while, switching over into doing hammocks. And in my next video, you're probably gonna see if I'm successful or not in the wild with this. This is the Hennessy hammock. It's the Expedition ASIN, that is the model right there. It is weighing in at, well, let's find out. Let's pop it right on the scale and do this. Three pounds, three ounces, and that's for everything. Okay, so we got the stuff stack here, and if you're not that familiar with the hammocks, here's the way this works okay two major or main components here is a tarp 
and the actual hammock itself. Stuff sacks, probably like an ounce. Hammock itself weighs in at two pounds, three and a half ounces. Okay, so there's your two pounds for the hammock. And then the tarp actually runs on, uh, runs above it to keep you dry. And that's popping in at 14 ounces. So about two pounds for the hammock, one pound for the tarp, and together, three pounds. Okay, so there's the weight savings right there. That should knock into the total weight pretty well. You've seen this before in my other video, but this is a negligible weight cooking system. That's my three ounce stove. Three ounce stove right there. Uh, homemade, a whole video on that, I won't get into it. But you know, since we're talking about weight, I've already been using this and it's awesome. So that's where I'm at as far as my purchases, which I hate to do, but it's necessary sometimes to get my weight down. And now I just gotta poke around a bit and see what other things I can tweak to, uh, and things that I can throw out, leave at home, and see, uh, see what weight we can get down to. But no need to bore you with all that. So there you have it. The result, down to a 16 pound base weight. Now base weight uh, is generally regarded as all of your gear except for consumables. So you exclude food, fuel, and water. And what we're left with is everything else that isn't variable. 16 pounds, not too bad, I'm happy with that. Uh, can't complain too much. One thing to remember you gotta consider is the bag is overkill. Even with the top taken off, which did shave a half a pound, the bag is weighing in still at around four and a half pounds. That is about 25% of the weight of the whole, the whole kit. So eventually, uh, get a uh, lighter weight bag, maybe like a two pound bag, and we could be looking at like a 14 pound base weight. Not too shabby, considering I still have some, what I consider luxury items in there that um, I I've identified what I could shave if I really wanted to, but you know, kind of slowly make progress, so we're getting there. With food and water and fuel, which is negligible, I'm only carrying three ounces of alcohol fuel, but with food, water, fuel, Total weight is 23 pounds, so not too bad. I can live with that. I'll uh, still tweak it some more. Like I said, well, probably the next thing to do would be get a different uh, bag. But other than that, my uh, I'm pretty happy with my big three all disposable plastic water bottles. Um, that really cuts back on the weight, except for the Osprey Hydrate Pink System, which um, is 12 ounces. But I've tried to hike without it and I find myself just under hydrating, so that's the trade-off I'm going to deal with until maybe I get a smaller pack and I find it more accessible just to drink out of a water bottle. Uh, so that's about it. If you want to see more details on um, what else is in here, uh, go watch my previous video, White Mountain Backpacking Prep. Um, it's pretty much applicable to any area, but that is the title of the video and I'll show you most of my gear with uh, the exception of the changes I've showed you on this video. Till next time, Syntax 77.